Hi guys, and in today's video, I am going to give you an honest appraisal of six of the hottest student saxophones that we currently have in our catalogue. If you like, this is the 2022 edition of the, the best of the student saxophones that we have available. So let me just tell you about the saxophones I've got from my left to my right here in price order. So starting with our very own Sakusu here in gold lacquer, and then moving on to this newbie here, this is the Jean Paul Alto. And then we've got the Trevor James The Horn, and we have here the Better Sax made by Conselma. And we have the Jupiter 700 here. And finally, to my right, we've got the famous uh, Yaz 280 Yamaha. So the idea here is just to give you an honest appraisal of what I feel about each saxophone as I play them. I know all these saxophones pretty well, and it's been interesting for me to just gather my thoughts in one place and compare them back to back really. So I'm just gonna play a little on each one, um, not too long, and then I'm just gonna give you a, um, a brief kind of comment on how I feel it responds to me as a player after I've played each one, and at the end I will give you my conclusions. <laughs> So I really love the big fat ripe sound that I'm getting from the Sakusu. Now we've been selling these Sakusus for a good few years now and we've settled on this particular um, rendition of the Sakusu because it really works for me. It's uh, prior to selecting this model we had two or three models that were okay but just didn't quite cut it. But with this one here, as you can hear from the sound there, considering its price point, it really is quite a warm sound that works through the entire range and in tune as well so and it feels great under the fingers as well you know quite often it can be the case that you get a spongy feel under the fingers um, you know an unsatisfactory key action but this feels very smooth and very satisfactory to me so the combination of a nice key system and quite a robust solid sound makes this as far as i'm concerned great value for money Very nice sax. Uh, so this is the Jean Paul, um, and I've recently done a video on this one and was very enthusiastic about it then as I am right now. Immediately I can kind of feel the tonal progression a little bit on from the Sikusa actually, which is fresh in my mind right now. And I find that I get a very a focused, almost vintage-like sound on this one. Um, vintage saxophones are quite famous for producing a darker sound that's very centered and focused, and I'm getting a real essence of that with this sound. Um, so it's very, really very appealing to me as I'm playing it right there. And it's very responsive as well. As I go up and down the whole range and settle on some of those lower notes, the, the notes just pop out beautifully. Um, so yeah, really lovely experience playing this. And it's also got a very nice close key action, um, which just allows those technical passages to just pop out much more easily. So very nice fluid feel overall. Um, quite a traditional design, nothing fancy going on there. Very basic kind of stamping here of the brand. So nothing fancy, um, but for me, it's not always about the look. It's about the way it performs, and for me this is performing very nicely indeed. So that's the Jean Paul. <laughs>
Well, I'm getting a great feeling from this saxophone, actually. It's got a lovely sound to it and quite similar to the Jean Paul for me in that it's got that um, center to the sound and a lot of warmth in the sound, but perhaps a little bit more brightness, a few more highs in the sound over and above the Jean Paul. So not quite that same vintagey darkness there, um, but overall it's a, it's a nice good general sound. It, it kind of touches on the depth side of things as well as having that little contemporary edge that allows you to push the sound through. So it's a nice sort of span of all of the you know the, the tonal colors that you might want to to hear um, and the way it feels under the fingers the key mechanism is a little bit more chunky than uh, the, the two I've just tried here actually um, which for some players you might like that feeling of um, larger keys under the fingers um, and, and perhaps just a little bit, bit more of a feeling of resistance as you as you touch down um, but it, it's a it's a smooth action um, that there's no sort of bittiness as you, as you travel from A to B. Um, so a slightly firmer action, but a very smooth action at the same time. Um, and just generally a very nice build quality. Um, it's, it's well made, there's not a huge amount of play in the keywork. Um, so a good solid design overall um, with decent intonation. <laughs> So this is the better sax right here, uh, the most recently reviewed saxophone that I've done on a, a video. And I can't uh, hide my strong feelings for this saxophone as being absolutely brilliant in its category. I find the sound, I don't know how it's coming across to you guys in the video, but I find the sound it has a real interest and sophistication in there and it's perhaps um, not heard so far in, in some of the others, to the same extent anyway. Um, yeah, a real maturity in the sound. And it's a little bit more intimate in a way. It doesn't have that same kind of overt quality, but you can still push it when you want to. Just naturally, it has that slightly more intimate jazz setting. Um, but it's flexible as well. You, you can play with it, you can push the sound, and. And, um, and it can turn a little brighter, but not overly bright, which for me personally, I love. So I really love the sound of this. And I love the look of it as well. It's got a slightly different lacquer thing going on to, to the others, which are slightly lighter with their lacquer. Um, but I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail right now because it's just my reaction off the bat to how it performs. Um, but I've touched on the action of the others, so I shall mention the action on this one, which I find very satisfying in the sense that there's quite a close key action. The keys are set close to the, the body, which um, allows a quick travel um, of uh, you know, the key action. Um, and um, it's very light as well. So a light action that is close is the perfect combo for me personally. It just allows you to be very fluid, very nimble. You can hear it working nicely there. Um, so loving the better sax. Now this is in the higher um, price bracket and um, we've reached the three on the right here. Um, so let's move on to the final two. <laughs> So the thing that draws me to the Jupiter more than anything is actually the quality of its build and its ergonomics. If I just hold it up to the camera for a minute, you can see here it's got these adjustable palm keys here. 
um, which just means that you can find the perfect shaping for your hand. Um, and I also love the table key arrangement. It's very smooth when you're rolling around between the G uh, sharp and the C sharp and the bottom B to the B flat. I think it's probably the best out of all of the saxophones in terms of that. Um, so yeah, very satisfying mechanism altogether. Um, when it comes to the sound, it's a very pleasant sound, um, very ripe sound and quite bright. For me, I find it a little overly bright. It's not quite got the depth to, to back it up and balance out the whole thing. Um, but it, it does have a very powerful sound. Um, I find it, it, it really goes, and if you really want to project, then the Jupiter, perhaps um, out of all of them, is, is at the top of the list in terms of packing a punch with the sound. Um, so some, yeah, generally good points to make about the Jupiter. It is a good overall robust instrument, but perhaps without that character of sound that we've heard from some of the others. <laughs> So finally we have the Yamaha 280, which is probably the most famous uh, student saxophone right at the top of the pile in terms of the, the price tag anyway. And, and you can see why it is so universally popular because it, it sort of ticks many boxes, if you want to use that phrase, whereby we know it's really well built. Um, we know that the mechanism is tight and solid. We know it's very lightweight um, and we know the intonation is very good and you've just heard the sound there. Very pleasing overall. It's a very big sound. I'm always surprised at how big the sound is on the 280 because I always think of the 280 being the lowest one on the Yamaha scale. Perhaps the sound isn't as big and bold as the, the latter models in the Yamaha range, like the 62 and what have you, but actually it's surprisingly big. I would describe the sound as um, a, a brighter sound and when you really push it, it's quite a sort of searing sound. You know, it can, it can really punch out, particularly in the upper register. But it's also a very smooth sound. You know, when you're playing mid volume, it's got a, a real sort of silky smoothness, which is very satisfactory. So overall, you know, it, it, it is a brilliant saxophone. Where personally for me, I feel it, it just lacks a little is it doesn't have that absolute character of sound um, that you know the interest in the sound that um, I, I derive from actually from the Jean Paul which um, I, I played second but particularly um, the, the better sax um, so for me it's just lacking a little bit in that area but overall you can see why educators would recommend this as a very um, go-to safe option um, for a student saxophone. Okay guys, so it's conclusion time. So I started with the Sakusu, which is the least expensive option. I described the, the build as being solid and I described the sound as being solid, um, but it's not quite delivering the same um, luxury sound that you're getting with some of these guys on the right hand side here. However, the sound is still pretty decent. So for the price, and considering the quality of the engineering, you're actually getting very good value for money. So if your budget is only around this area here, I really would heavily recommend you to, to start out on the Sakusa. But if you can afford a little bit more, if you can push it to, to, to this area here, the extra benefits that you're getting, um, I touched on it as I moved on to the Jean Paul, second in line here, I really found that there was a progression in, in tonal quality here, moving on to the Jean Paul, where there was this vintagey essence in the sound that really appeals to me personally. Um, and also, I love the nimble feel of the keywork. I'm not gonna go over all ground, I've, I've covered that before, but I just want you to see what you're getting by spending a few extra pounds on getting, a, a, say, a Jean Paul over and above a Sakusu if your budget was to, to push as far as the likes of this one here. And then with the Trevor James here, the similar kind of idea really, um, in that the sound for me was a little bit more developed um, with a, a really great feel under the keywork, um, but the sound just pushes in a, in a little bit 
more of a different direction to the Jean Paul. So then it just becomes a subjective thing. You've heard me playing them. Perhaps you can find this video useful and that you can compare and contrast the sound of the Jean Paul to the Trevor James and see which one you prefer. Everyone's got their own opinion. And then on my right hand side, um, moving on to, uh, it has to be said, these saxophones are a, a good degree more expensive um, than these ones here. So the, the better saxophone here um, was really the one that heavily appealed to me sort of on an emotional level in that the sound really just um, kind of lit up my interest. Um, and for me, the number one quality that I look for, other than having good intonation, if it's got terrible intonation, forget it. But all of these saxophones actually have pretty decent tuning, but it's the sound. For me, it's about the sound, and with this one, it really delivers a fantastic sound. Um, and I've, I've mentioned the key work works absolutely beautifully. So this one was really floating my boat, the better sax. Um, and it's just price-wise just a little under these two here the Jupiter and the Yamaha 280 which are actually on a par um, price-wise and it's interesting that these two uh, the Jupiter and the Yamaha are kind of left to compare if you like at the same price in the sense that they're, they're quite similar with their sound concept the bright modern sound if you like um, and it'd be interesting to see how that comes out on, on tape when you play back the Jupiter against the Yamaha. But I feel there's a lot of similarities there. I am finding sound-wise with the Yamaha, there's just a little bit more added smoothness in there, which is why I think it appeals so heavily. Um, but in terms of all the other aspects, you know, the mechanism, what have you, um, it's very much on a par, um, the Jupiter to the, to the Yamaha. Um, perhaps with the Jupiter being just a, a little heavier um, under the, well, weight-wise actually, uh, compared to the to the Yaz 280. Um, but it uh, be interesting to see how the sound comes out when I listen back, Jupiter get against the Yamaha, and of course you guys can let us know what you think in the comments. Um, so overall, as you can see, I'm not picking out a favourite because I think they all offer something, they all deliver something, and they're all set at different price points. But merely, you've got six great saxophones here, they've all got their, um, their quirks and they've all got their you know, pros and cons, mainly on the pro side as you can hear here. Hopefully this has been useful and I will see you on the next video.